I recently saw this really cool procedural salamander animation from Ruji K. Their work is just incredible and it inspired me to try to make something similar. So this is my journey of making a procedurally animated and textured snake game in Godot. I started out by spending some time just looking at the salamander animation and trying to think about how it worked. The basic idea here is that you can simulate the movement of a salamander or a snake by having a series of points that follow each other in a line and maintain a set distance. I'd previously read an article that demonstrated something very similar using simple constraint-based rules to create really interesting effects, so I revisited that to get some ideas. In Godot, it seemed like the simplest way for me to get some sort of snake-like thing working using this technique would be to use the line 2D node which has a lot of built-in functionality, so I decided to start with that. I first created a line 2D with some points, and then in the draw function for the node, I just drew little circles at each point to represent where they were so I could see it visually. I then started trying to get the constraints-based approach working, where I would have the first point in the line follow my mouse, and then all of the other points follow its movement to give a really cool effect. The math for this ended up being pretty simple, but I did spend a bit here trying to figure out how it should work, and I had some weird visual bugs along the way, but eventually I did get it working, it was just one small thing I was missing. At the point I was actually pretty pleased with how it was looking already, given the small amount of code required to get the behavior. Then I wanted to see if I could make it look more snake-like, so I spent some time messing around with the line 2D settings. I was able to use a width curve to make the thickness of the line bigger at the head and smaller at the tail, which immediately made it more creature-like. I also rounded the line's joints and caps. And then I also made the points I was drawing on the snake scale with the snake's body to make it look more fitting. I was pretty happy with this initial result. It was already feeling pretty snake-like and it was procedurally animated without too much work, but there was a lot more to come. And then I started trying to figure out how to apply a texture to the snake to make it look a bit more interesting. I was just using the Godot icon at the time, but it was looking a little weird, so I decided to take a break. My initial goal for this day was to figure out how to get textures working properly. I kind of expected to be lots of little Godot heads, but it looks like it's either glitching or just spawning a ton of them. <laughs> I thought maybe it could be a bug with how the line 2D mesh is actually generated behind the scenes. Maybe the UVs for the textures were off. So I tried investigating that for a while, but wasn't really figuring anything out. I eventually discovered that it was a bug with how I was setting the width and the width curve of the line. Okay, that's working as I'd expect it to now. So I guess we just have to be careful with the values we set in the width curve. <laughs> I made a simple snake texture in a sprite to use instead of the Godot face. It'd be kind of cool though if the texture could be randomized, so I could make a few different ones, but it'd be cool if the colors could be randomized. My idea here was to make a bunch of black and white snake textures for black, would represent the color of the snake's body and white would be the pattern color. And then I would use a shader to change those colors based on some user selected body and pattern color. So I made some more simple snake patterns in black and white this time. And then I wrote the simple shader to change the colors. It was actually pretty easy to get working. No, right, that's kind of cool. <laughs> then I decided I wanted to give the snake some more personality. So I made some eyes in a sprite and tried to figure out how to attach them to the snake correctly. <laughs> I mean, I knew this wouldn't work, but I think we need to do some diagramming. I eventually realized that I needed to get the perpendicular vector to the direction the snake is facing, and then use that to calculate where the eye should be located relative to the head points. Oh, yeah. There we go, I think. Okay, it looks weird when you cross over the body, I guess. I think I'll come back to this tomorrow. Yesterday I left off with the snake looking good when you're moving in big increments, but when you're moving in small increments, the eyes are constantly rotating. I think that's just because the mouse, you know, is constantly moving and every tiny movement can cause a rotation of the eyes. So I think we need to have the snake not be positioned exactly on the mouse. So let's fix that. Fixing this was actually pretty simple. I just had to make the snake stop moving before it approached the actual location of the mouse. All right, that's kind of working, right? <laughs> I wanted to make the snake move it feel a bit smoother, so I used some interpolation to make it slow down as it approached its destination. I then wanted to make it so that when the snake wrapped around itself, the head would actually go over the body instead of under it. And I was actually able to fix this by just reversing the order of the points in the lines so that the head was the last point instead of the first point, and that worked as I wanted. It's overlapping itself correctly now. Then I set out to make it so that I could generate random snakes with random colors and patterns. Since I wanted to have a set color palette and and set patterns for the snake, I realized that using Godot's custom resources seemed like a good fit for storing that data, 
and I spent some time learning how to use them because I hadn't used them before. I then made a pattern options resource containing the different body and pattern colors, as well as the different pattern textures. It's kind of cool though. I haven't used resources before, but it seems like a decent way to do this and just set up colors I want. And then I used that to select random ones when creating a snake. Ever changing snake. I realized the snake would look a lot cooler if it moved more like an actual snake with a wavy winding pattern instead of just in a straight line. Sort of like what you see in <laughs> no snakes could do that. So my problem is right now the snake kind of just moves forward, but most snakes kind of move in more of a wavy pattern all the time. So it's kind of like a sine wave, but a little bit more variable with smaller peaks and some are bigger. So let's see if we can maybe use some math. It had been a while since I've had to use a sine function. So I spent some time just learning out game math in general to get my bearings. I got some things kind of working, but with some very weird visual glitches. <laughs> <laughs> let's do something. Oh, it's actually kind of working, isn't it? I mean, this is kind of interesting. This is kind of the fun thing about trying to do procedural animations is you don't know what you're going to get, at least if you don't understand what's going on. But like, the effect is kind of looking cool. Kind of looking like what I want, actually. I think I might just come back to this tomorrow. The next two days I spent probably too much time just trying to tweak this animation and understand how to make it look like what I wanted it to. I made it so the amplitude of the wave was based on where you were in the snake's body so that it would be less wavy at the head, more wavy in the middle, and then less wavy at the tail. So like if I moved this here to be curvy at the front, yep. <laughs> so let's move this back to the center, maybe make it go out here. I mean, that's pretty fun. <laughs> I continued to have really weird visual bugs. <laughs> but it's not what I'm going for. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh no. I realized at this point that I had spent way too long looking into this animation. It had been three days now, and I already had something pretty good looking after the first day, so I eventually realized that okay. for real this time, I think we're going to leave this as the snake animation for now, and maybe come back to it later. So what I want to do now is make some sort of snake generator interface so that you can customize your own snake and then maybe from there we'll make a game with the snake just to get something that I can post online. So let's do that. I was also thinking it could be cool to use noise to get some sort of procedural texture for the snake as well in addition to my set one. So maybe we'll play around with that too. So I spent some time here figuring out how to incorporate cellular noise into my snake shader. I ended up writing some code to blend a lightened version of the pattern color with the the overall snake texture based on the noise value of a cellular noise texture at that UV index. And then I made it so that a random type of cellular noise based on a random noise seed is incorporated into every snake's texture when you randomize it. I think this gave it a surprisingly cool look. And now I can generate basically infinite snake designs. I think that's good for now. I feel like I want to separate the snake more from the background, so maybe it needs an outline or something like that. I initially wasn't sure how to do this. I was researching outline shaders, but I wasn't sure if that would work with the way I had implemented things. So I decided instead to go with a much simpler approach of just duplicating the snake, making it bigger, turning it black, and putting it under the original snake, and that works surprisingly well. I mean, that looks kind of good, right? <laughs> the problem is when it goes over itself, the outline goes under. And that was tricky uh, to think about how to fix. I tried messing around with shaders to potentially fix this, but it was getting complicated, so I decided to leave it be for now. I spent some time refactoring the snake code so I didn't have to repeat all the math for the snake and its outline, so I separated the snake into three different nodes. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't mean to do that, but it's like <laughs> a shadow. <laughs> Not sure why that's happening though. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but I do think it is missing one crucial component still, and that is a snake tongue. <laughs> so we see some sort of forked line like this that just kind of moves around. I'm not sure how I should implement that, if it should be pixel art or maybe just some polygons. Let me just play around with it. I made a simple looking tongue with a polygon 2D node and attached it to the snake's head. I spent a while trying to figure out how to make the tongue correctly rotate to match the direction the snake was facing, but eventually got it. I spent some time animating the tongue using an animation player and I had it played back periodically based on a timer as the snake moved around the screen. This animation was pretty slow looking at first, but I would improve this later on. I then decided I wanted to add the ability for the snake to follow a set path 
path on the screen rather than just always following the mouse. Right now I want the snake to be able to just kind of move around a path as you edit it. So kind of some sort of looping path over here. I use Godot's convenient path 2D and path follow 2D nodes to move a marker around a path on the screen over time and then set it up so that the snake head would follow the position of that marker. Okay, that's kind of working. Pretty slow, but it's following my path, I think. <laughs> I started by working on improving the tongue animation. I sped up the animation 10 times because that felt a bit better. And then I also made the animation randomly play back one to three times consecutively because that made it feel a bit more realistic. All right, now let's make some UI on the right side here that will let you customize your snake before you do something with it. So I spent some time looking into Godot's UI system because I hadn't had much experience with it so far. I eventually just decided to keep things very simple here and just add a randomize button that would generate a custom snake for you and you can just click it to generate different ones. I also added some more color options for the snake and some more snake patterns as well. I do like some of these patterns and how the noise works on the snake. I think it looks really cool. Now I wanted to make the background of the game more interesting. I thought it would be kind of cool if the snake was going through grass, so I briefly looked into some ways to make swaying dynamic grass but I eventually realized that would be a whole separate project on its own, so I decided to not go down that route for now. I did make a really ugly version of it though. So eventually I just decided to use a free background texture I had previously downloaded, but I still wanted to spice it up. I found a ripple shader and applied that to the background to give it a kind of interesting wavy look. I spent some time messing around with different settings until I found something I liked. This doesn't make any sense necessarily for a background for this, but it looks kind of cool. Okay, let's make some sort of snake game. <laughs> Since the snake needs to know if it collides with itself, I needed to figure out how to get collision detection working between the snake head and the rest of its body. I made an Area 2D positioned at the head point to detect collisions with the body, and then I added an Area 2D for the body, and at runtime I generated collision shapes based on the points in the snake and on the width at that point in the snake line. And then I hooked up the on area entered signal to the head so that I could tell when it collided with the body. Now the event is firing whenever it hits the other areas. Then I wanted to get the snake food spawning. So I made some quick art and made a food spawner scene that spawns the food in a random location on the screen and made it so that when the snake head collides with the food, the food transports itself to a new position. Nice. All right. That's kind of the key component of the randomized button still there. The goal for this day was to finish up the main mechanics of the game. I first wanted to try out some different control schemes for the snake. I thought arrow key controls might feel better, so I started out with that, and I made something kind of like a more traditional snake game where you can only move directly left, right, up, or down, but that felt a bit too rigid for the procedural moving snake. And then tested out a mouse-based movement mode where the snake would move in the direction of the mouse, and if you stopped moving the mouse, it would keep going in the last mouse direction, but I didn't love that either. I wasn't set on either of these controls, but I left it on the arrow key one for now. And then I made it so that the snake actually grew when you ate food. I then decided I wanted to try another approach, a more rotation-based approach where the snake would rotate its head either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on if you're holding the right or left arrows. I ran into some funny bugs trying to get this to work, but I eventually got it working well, and I liked how it was feeling. All right, I think this is feeling better. It's more of a constant speed, but slowing down a little bit when you turn. Obviously the tug is messed up, so I need to fix that, but I think it feels pretty good. I might need to increase the speed of the snake a bit to make it more challenging. Then I finally made a start button and made the UI go away when you enter game mode so it feels more like a legit game. And then I hooked up the collisions I had set up previously to reset the game whenever the snake runs into itself and dies. Now I obviously need something to happen when you run into yourself, so it just doesn't go here. It needs to do something. I kind of think it'd be funny if it like exploded, <laughs> like that chicken effect I had. So I created a particle system and applied the same shader that was on the snake to that system and then also set the texture of the particle system to be based on the current snake's texture via code, and that worked. I spent a while here messing around with the different parameters of the particle system to get an effect I liked, and I eventually got something looking pretty good. And then I made it so that when the snake runs into itself, it plays back this particle explosion effect and disappears, and it was pretty much working. There were some bugs going on, but I decided to come back to it the next day. I decided to rework the explosion effect to make it look a bit more cool. I think it would be cool if the snake kind of more exploded in parts, so when it runs into itself, it explodes from tail to head, and I think I could do that, so let's try it out. The effect actually wasn't too hard to get working, but I did have to tweak things a lot to get it looking like I wanted. <laughs> Not quite doing what I want, but uh, we can fix that. 
<laughs> okay. It is looking pretty good. I think it just needs some sort of sound effect now. <laughs> It's also a little slow, but I don't know, it's, it's fun. Then I also decided to make the snake grow more at a time when it eats food so that it gets bigger quicker. To make the game feel more like a game, I decided to finally add in a score counter that goes up as you eat the food. I used tweens here to make the score animate and look more fun as it increases, and tweens are really cool. I hadn't really looked at them before in Godot, but I will definitely be using them a lot more in the future. I also then used tweens to make the buttons scale up as you hover over them. Then I decided it was time to make the snake actually explode when you go too far off the screen as well. So I set up some area 2Ds outside of the game world and made the snake die when it hits them. At this point, I felt like I was almost done. I think we're almost done here. But there's still a bit of polish I wanted to do and I wanted to add sound effects. So I spent some time looking at sound effects, but couldn't really find anything I liked. So I decided to just come back the next day and finish it up. All right, so the goal for today is to just finish this project up. I'm pretty happy with where it is right now, but I want to add some final polishing touches. I thought it would be cool if the background of the game just slowly changed colors over time, so I thought a bit about how to do that. I realized I could actually use an infinitely looped tween for this and use it to slowly change the hue of the background's modulate color over time to give it a nice fading in and out of different colors effect. Next up, I really wanted to add sound effects. I couldn't really find any ones I liked, so I decided to try to generate some randomly. I got some that I thought could work for the explosion of the snake, so I spent some time experimenting with them and different ways of playing them back. It feels too slow. I made the explosion sound vary in speed based on where it was in the explosion and that sounded a bit better. That's probably fine. <laughs> I feel like sound effects are really important for games so I decided to keep adding more. I experimented with some different ones for picking up food and added one to the game. Not the most exciting sound but it works. And then I looked for some simple background music. Feeling a lot more real now. <laughs> And then I added some sound effects for clicking on the randomize and start buttons as well. I think all that's really remaining right now is to improve the food, the look of the food. This right now it's just a random red circle. I feel like what I'm picturing is kind of a square white glowing little cube with some particles falling off of it. I was able to get glow working by adding a world environment node and enabling the glow property and then setting the color of the food to be over the HDR threshold. I played around with this effect for a while until I got something I liked and then I wanted to add some glowing particles around the food as well. Then I made the snake a bit smaller to start with so the growing would be more satisfying and tweaked some of the speed settings as well and then I decided I was done. All right, this is looking pretty cool now and I think I'm done. It's hard to call it, but you have to call it somewhere. I might still tweak the explosion sounds a little bit and maybe some of the movement before posting it, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. So this is the final project and I think it turned out quite well. I like a lot of the different snake varieties you can generate and I think the animation looks pretty cool as well. So if you'd like to try it out yourself, I'll have it linked in the description. I do plan to come back to this in the future and maybe give it some legs, make it more like a salamander, maybe just work on some other procedural creatures as well, but I'm happy with this for now. In general, I'm getting way more comfortable with Godot and game dev concepts in general now, so I'm excited to continue on to the next project. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.